Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Chelsea. My husband, Eric, and I are currently pregnant with our first baby via IVF. So it wasn't an easy process getting here. Um, but we are here, we are very excited, and I've loved sharing our journey this past year. It's been a year this week um, since we started documenting our life and um, what we've been up to, which um, we started with our IVF consultation. So I can't believe it's been a whole year since then, um, since that's all happened. Um, but yeah, we are just super excited that you guys have followed us. Those of you who have been here since the beginning, we really appreciate it. Um, and then those of you who are just clicking into this video for the first time and this is the first time you're meeting me, welcome. Um, because it's been a year since we started the IVF process, I thought it would be cool to do a like comprehensive look at our IVF journey. I think this could be really helpful for people who are about to start um, their own IVF journey. Um, for them to sort of get like an overview idea of what to expect. This will all be based off of my experience. So obviously every doctor is different, every clinic is different. You could have a totally different experience than me, but um, I think it will help at least give comfort to those of you who are going through IVF or about to start or whatever. Um, to know that you're not alone. A lot of people have done this. You can do it too. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. So like I said, we started IVF a year ago this week. Honestly, I think it's a year ago. I think we started on the 23rd of January, so when you're watching this, yeah, it's like a year ago we started. We're on our way. We're gonna document this. Okay, so we are going to our IVF consultation for the first, our first appointment. We just got back and the verdict is that we're going to start IVF a week from today, or just whenever I start my cycle. <laughs> I remember being really excited to get started with IVF because, you know, it took us a long time to get to the point to be able to do IVF. Um, IVF can be very expensive and it's not a decision that is made lightly. Um, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, it's not something you can just be like, hey, let's do IVF. Well, at least we didn't feel that way. It was an emotional financial, physical, like all-encompassing decision. So if you're new here, just to bring you up to speed, um, our, I mean, you're probably wondering what our diagnosis is as far as fertility goes. We are still undiagnosed. We don't have any um, set issues, like defined issues, I guess, that makes it so we can't get pregnant on our own. Um, my husband, we've obviously gone through a ton of testing and I have videos about that as well, but my husband has no issues with sperm quality or anything like that. And as far as the doctor can tell, I have normal functioning reproductive organs. Um, he said there is a slight chance I could have endometriosis, but the only way to diagnose that is through surgery. And my doctor didn't see a reason for that because so many people get pregnant without, um, being diagnosed or treated, I guess, for endometriosis. There's not a whole ton you can do for it. So, um, we, like I said, are undiagnosed. Um, I'm sure you're wondering as well how old we are. A lot of people assume that if you're doing IVF, then you are older, um, but that's just not the case. Uh, we, well, I guess I am a little bit older. I'm 31 years old. When we did IVF, I was 30, yeah, and um, my husband is 33, so he was 32 when we um, started IVF. Uh, and then you're probably wondering how long we 
tried. Naturally, we tried for about two years um, on our own, and then we started doing fertility treatments like IUI and Clomid and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I have videos all on that as well. But as far as IVF goes, once we decided we were ready to, you know, get started with the whole process, I called my um, fertility clinic and scheduled a consultation for IVF with my RE, which is a reproductive endocrinologist. And I remember it was about a month before we could get in to see him. I called him around just before Christmas time and then we had our consultation, I believe, on January 23rd last year. So things moved pretty quickly for us and it's not like that for everyone. Like I said, this is gonna be based off of our experience. So you can take that for whatever it's worth to you. Um, so we did the consultation um, and at my clinic, the way that my doctor works is like very similar, I think, to how other clinics work. They kind of do their IVF schedules together, meaning they group um, couples together that are going to be on the same cycle. And um, so, you know, my doctor will do egg retrievals all in the same week and then transfers all in the same week. So that's why a lot of people get put on birth control before actually like starting IVF um, to sort of control your body's menstrual cycle, essentially. Um, so they asked me when I was going to be starting my period and I think it just lined up perfectly to when the doctor would be doing the egg retrievals. So I didn't actually have to do birth control. So we met with him, I think it was a Tuesday, and then that fr that was for the consultation. And then that Friday, we met with a financial counselor, I guess, and she gave us sort of the rundown of what that would, like everything, what all the costs would be based off of what we um, wanted as far as our protocol went. And um, when we met with our doctor in the consultation, we did ask to do PGS testing. So when we met with the financial counselor, she took that into consideration and gave us all the numbers of how much it would cost. The two circled things would be what we pay to U Utah Fertility Clinic and then everything else that wasn't circled would be um, paid to other like labs or insurance um, or uh, like pharmacies. And if you're interested, you can go ahead and watch that video, that full video or um, my video that breaks down exactly what we ended up paying um, to get pregnant. And um, I did that just a couple months ago, so it's a little more updated. But I did save all of my paperwork through this whole process because I just felt like it would be cool to refer back to it and also just in case I needed to refer back to it for whatever reason. So I still have that paper from the video that you just watched. So in addition to meeting with our IVF financial counselor, we also met with an IVF coordinator. This would be the person who was going to give us our calendar, walk us through step-by-step, day-by-day, what we were going to be doing, because the doctors just don't have time for that. So this is just a nurse that um, sort of guides you through the process and walks you through your calendar and medications and all that stuff. So once we decided that financially we, were, we had a plan, we were ready to go, um, we met with our IVF coordinator and she gave us our IVF calendar. And she also explained to us like medications and where they would be coming from, how to order them, how much they would cost, all that kind of stuff. And oh my goodness, this day, I remember it was so overwhelming. And if you feel overwhelmed, it's totally normal. Like this is crazy, like what you have to go through <laughs> in IVF. And so I just lost it and I was just so overwhelmed that like this is what we had to do like it just became so real that this is how much money we would have to spend and this is like the amount of drugs I would have to take every day medications and injections and all this kind of stuff and I can't believe I was gonna have to poke myself with needles and oh, I was just so overwhelmed we just got done with our IVF um, when we met with the IVF coordinator and 
I don't know, it's just crazy how once you decide to do this, it just like, you, they just jump right into it. Jump right, jump right, right in. into it. Like, we're ordering our meds today. They're being shipped from California. Like, I don't they have know. everything mapped out on a piece of paper. And it's a calendar. I have it. I have it right here. And we scheduled all of our appointments. And I don't know why, but I'm just feeling very overwhelmed. How are you feeling? Well, since you're the one that has to do something every day for three weeks, I don't envy you, but. I don't know. It's just like. overwhelmed <laughs> just know that it's normal and know that everything will be okay if I can make it through this so can you so here's what our IVF calendar looked like so as you can see this one is this is January and we started um, a Z pack um, very first that that's so that you um, they put you on a Z pack, both you and your partner, just so that you go into the process with not having any like sickness or whatever. Um, and then they put a question mark here, cycle day one, because that's when I told them um, I would start my period. And then uh, I remember they sent us links so that we could watch videos on how to administer the injections that we're going to be doing. And I remember also having to at this, like during this time, call and organize um, the deliveries for medications because these medications were coming from California from a specialized pharmacy and they had to overnight them and all that stuff. So um, I remember I had to stay home from work because the medications were being delivered at a certain time and I had to sign for them and make sure to put them in the fridge because some of them needed to be refrigerated. So... Um, after we did the Z pack for five days, um, we review we watched the injection videos. We got the the injection injections came in the mail. Um, actually, I think the injections didn't come like the medications didn't come until the day I was supposed to start them. I was kind of worried about it, but ended up working out okay. Um, so I remember so on here on our calendar it says the thirty first of January we had. It looks like baseline ultrasound. This is basically where you go in, you do a vaginal ultrasound, they look at your ovaries, all the follicles that are on them, and they tell you about how many you have and see, you know, as long as everything is looking good and ready to go, um, then you can start the injections. Um, and it looks like we started the injections the day after that. So. I do remember they had me on a baby aspirin that starting day on the baseline ultrasound day. They That's when I also started a baby aspirin and that was just so that um, it could promote blood flow to the uterus. That's basically why you have they have you take that. So on the baseline ultrasound day, we also had to have our like down payment, um, like the bulk of the money that was due for the IVF procedures and the whole process. That was due, and then um, we had blood work done, both Eric and I, and we had to sign a bunch of consent forms, and that even included like what we would do with our embryos, um, and just a bunch of different things that a bunch of paperwork that needed to be signed. So that was baseline ultrasound day, and then it was the next day that injections came because I do remember the injections came the day that I started them. So, um, which was February 1st. Guess what came? I don't 
don't really know what to do with this stuff. <laughs> I'm waiting for Eric to get home. He should be home any minute now. And he can help me. We're probably going to need to watch those injection videos again. being so terrified of needles I still am but it was pretty dramatic all done with shot number one it didn't even hurt I just hate <laughs> it I just hate stuff going inside <laughs> wave to the people no <laughs> so as you can tell it was pretty dramatic for me I did not like that I had to do this um, I was so scared and I don't know, even though I wasn't actually administering the injections to myself, and I trusted my husband, but I just was so overcome with fear that, you guys, if you're afraid of needles, you can do this. I know you can because I did it, and you will survive. Um, and also, don't, don't be intimidated by the process. You should have either a class or some videos to watch on how to do administer the injections it's really not that hard I felt like it was so intimidating and it is in the beginning but just don't don't be afraid that you're gonna mess it up just double check what you're doing um, and have confidence that you are going to do it right because it really is not that hard and I think I was overthinking it a ton same with my husband and we were just like stressed out and sweating um, for that first injection or two just oh my gosh, are we doing this right or what? And um, you you can do it, I promise. I just want to give you all the encouragement that you can totally do it. I know how overwhelming it feels and intimidating it is, but you can do it. So we did the injections for one, two, three, four days. So we did Follistim and Menopure. And then on day six, usually day five or six is when you'll go in for a um, blood work and an ultrasound to check and see how the how your ovaries are responding to the medications. And I remember this was the day that I think I had to go into the doctor by myself, meaning my husband couldn't come with me and I'd always wanted him to be there just in case I ever heard bad news, I needed his support and I strongly encourage that if your partner can be there with you, it's, um, so much easier because you have their support um, and I remember this being kind of a hard day because I think I was worried that I had ovulated already um, but I don't know this could have been another day now I'm like kind of getting it confused but I'll put in some footage of the process I am at the fertility clinic I am going to my first appointment by myself this is our first appointment since starting stim shots. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous because I just, I'm not sure what to expect. I don't know what, like, I don't know. I'm worried like maybe my body's not responding to the medication well. And so maybe they'll make me take more medication or guys, there's always a chance that this IVF cycle could be canceled. So, and I'm way more nervous when I'm by myself. And so, Eric couldn't come today and he uh, is working and so that's why I'm here by myself. I even tried to recruit some people to come here with me but everyone's got stuff going on on a Tuesday morning and I get it so I can be brave and I can come to a doctor's appointment by myself. So let's go in and let's see how things are going. Hello. Hi. Um, I just got out of the doctor, so, um, just wanted to give you the update. So, I, she didn't tell me how many, like, follicles I had exactly, but she said I had a lot, and it looked really good, and she said it looked like I already had, so on one side I had 12, which is really good. Yeah. She didn't tell me what I had on the other side, but on the other side, it looked like I had more based off of what I can see and um, you know because we're trying to get as many as we can here right 
Um, but she said I had one. I my biggest ones were 14, 16, and 20. And she said 20 is really big for this far along. And so she's worried that I may have ovulated already, which would be a terrible thing. But that's just like one, that's like one thing, right? I don't no, you, when you ovulate all of them, like you'd release all of them basically. That's what I think. Uh. So what did she say? What's... Well, she said, so she gave me Ghana Relics, which is what I'm supposed to start today. But she gave it to me while I was there because she was, like, worried. Like, she said I needed to get that done as soon as possible. She didn't seem too worried about it, but she just really wanted me to get that shot done now. Rather than wait till you could give it to me. Okay. So she gave it to me, and we just have to bring one back to replace the one that they used. Okay. So just pray that I didn't ovulate. They took my blood, and they're going to check. They'll know if I ovulated when they get the blood results back. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. That'd be bad. I think. I don't know. She didn't explain much to me, but I assume that would make us have to cancel this whole thing. So we would just be out of this medication. I guess. Just, which is basically what I'm just planning on because sometimes that's how these things go, but we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just worried. <laughs> well, don't be worried. I mean, if they were more stressed about it, I think they would know. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't. She, she was smiling and happy and nice. She didn't seem really stressed about it, but she did say, Ooh, you, I'm going to make sure that you haven't ovulated already. Well, when will they know? I don't know. Later today, I guess. All right. Well, let's just wait and see. Everything ended up being normal and things were, I was responding well, so they started me on... Ganarelix, which I think is cetratide, and it helps you to not ovulate. Um, and then I continued the Folistim and Menopure for two days. And then you go back on this, like a, a day between. So here's that ultrasound, and then I went in um, a couple days later and did another blood work ultrasound appointment. And this also says this is the last day for high impact exercise and intercourse because you are, your ovaries are getting big. By this point, I had been on the medications for eight days and I was definitely feeling um, heavy in my ovaries, like just like bricks were just stuck there in my ovaries. They were just so heavy. And um, I mean, each follicle it's about this big, I think. I don't know how big exactly, but your they say that your um, ovaries can grow to the size of like oranges, so or grapefruits or something. So you're definitely feeling bloated, and my back ached. I remember. Um, so yeah, definitely don't want to do any high impact exercise by this point. I was just taking taking it easy. Um, then I remember. After that ultrasound and the blood work came back, they had me stop Menopure um, for the next day and just do half the Folistim and continue on the Cetratide. So we're heading in for our morning ultrasound and blood work. I got a call yesterday from my IVF nurse telling me to take only 75 milligrams of Folistim, which is half of what I been taking this week and then to not take any manicure which is I was happy to hear that because I hate that shot it burns when it goes in and then um I went in for blood work and ultrasound again that day and then that's when they told me I could do the trigger shot they thought I would do my egg retrieval um on Monday the 12th but, so that was going to be 12 days 
of stimming on those medications, but I ended up responding a little faster, I think, than they expected. And so they had me trigger on a Friday night and I did my egg retrieval on a Sunday morning because they have you do it, they have you do a trigger shot to make you ovulate. Um, and you'll ovulate like 36 hours after you do that trig trigger shot. So they want you to ovulate so um, right when they want to schedule it so that they can do the egg retrieval um, when you're ovulating, I guess. Hi guys, it is Friday night. I am exhausted. I am not feeling well. I am ready for all of this to be done, to be honest. Eric is at a movie. I am about to give myself, well not give myself, about to do the HCG trigger shot. I got a call um, after our blood test results came through this afternoon. I got a call around 5. It was my IVF nurse. She was just telling me everything I need to do for this um, oops, HCG shot. They, want, they do want me to trigger tonight. So that means egg retrieval is scheduled for Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So I got to take this injection, this trigger shot at 8 p.m. Eric said a movie, like I said, so I had to call in some friends to do it. So luckily my friend, she's a nurse practitioner, and so she is going to come and do my shot. I am just so ready to get these eggs out of me. They are... Like I said, my ovaries, are, they just feel like bricks, and they're pretty big. When we, when we were at the appointment today, the nurse was like, uh, yeah, your ovaries are pretty big. I don't know what that means. I don't know how big they are, but I assume they're big because I feel very bloated, and I feel like maybe this is what it feels like to be pregnant, and I should just suck it up because this is what it could be like. So anyway, I think my friends are here to give me the shot. So I did the trigger shot Friday night, and then Sunday morning we went in around... I don't know, 7 a.m. to do the egg retrieval. Good morning. It is egg retrieval day, and I was super nervous last night, cried a little bit, um, couldn't sleep. So I remember being so nervous for my egg retrieval, like terrified <laughs> of just the surgery and how I would recover. I, I had heard horror stories of people like getting OHSS where you bloat and um, your estrogen levels are through the roof and it makes you um, like very ill essentially. And um, I was just so worried about getting OHSS and having a lot of complications with surgery. Plus on top of that, I was like, hope, like worried and hoping that they would get as many eggs as possible. It was just very stressful. I was so worried about the egg retrieval and just even getting put under anesthesia. I was so scared about that. <laughs> um, but honestly, looking back now, the egg retrieval is like the easiest part. It's so quick, so easy. I remember laying down on the table. They put the, um, I had a great anesthesiologist. He put an IV in me to kind of take the edge off. There was like, I don't know what medication there was in there, but kind of relaxed me, and then all of a sudden, the doctor came in, but I don't remember anything else. All of a sudden, I was awake, and they were like wheeling me into a room with a recliner. Somehow, I got into the recliner. I don't really remember how, but I just remember waking up and being like, I wasn't in any pain. I had a heating pad on and a blanket, and I was just like, wait, are you guys done? Are you sure you're done? I don't, I don't know. Did you, <laughs> did you are you sure you did the surgery because it just like went so fast which I was so grateful for. He woke me up and he's like we're all done and I was like we didn't even start. It was only like 30 or 40 minutes. That was like the best thing I've ever had in my life. Oh. I feel a little bit crampy but not more so than I've already felt today when I woke up. Yeah he said you'd be crampy. Mm. And then after the surgery was over and I had come to a little bit, like it took me about 20, 30 minutes, um, the doctor came in and told me how many eggs they were able to retrieve. And for me, they retrieved 22, which was a great number. I was really happy about that. And then 
uh, at that point, she just, you know, kind of gave me instructions on what to do for the next few days while we waited for the full report of how many embryos we would get. So even though egg retrieval ended up being a lot easier for me than expected, uh, the recovery process after egg retrieval was a lot harder for me than I expected. Not that it was way hard, it just was harder than I expected. I was so worked up about the egg retrieval being so scary and so hard that I didn't even think about um, the recovery post egg retrieval, if that makes sense. So I took about two days off of work um, to just rest and sleep at home. Um, and I'm lucky because my job, I can work from home if I need to. Um, and it was honestly just, I felt very bloated and very tired. My back ached. I felt like I just had to sleep to recover. So that's what I did. I just really let my body rest and, um, was on a heating pad a lot and just really took it easy for, um, a good two to three days and then started to go back to normal life after that. But I still did not feel like myself for, I think it was about two weeks before I felt like I could work out again and like just do my normal day-to-day -day activities without any sort of discomfort. And it, and it was discomfort. It wasn't pain. I was just very, like I said, bloated and just, I felt very heavy down there. And tired. I was just so tired. Um, and I think that my body just, you know, had gone through something that was a little bit, it was a surgery. It was a little bit traumatic to my body. So I just needed that time to recover. So don't be surprised if you do need, you know, a good two weeks to recover from uh, egg retrieval. So I'm going to do a whole video on um, my frozen embryo transfer and what that process was like separate from this because, um, we did PGS testing and so we had to do a frozen embryo transfer. We couldn't do a fresh transfer. And there are like differing opinions on what is more successful, but really I could do a whole video on that too. They are kind of equal. There's really not one that's supposedly better necessarily, like significantly better than the other. So we could do a whole nother video about that. Let me know if you guys want that. But, um, if you were to do a fresh transfer, then I think the day you do your egg retrieval that night or whenever your doctor would have you do it, you would start either progesterone and suppositories or progesterone and oil injections or even both. So if you were doing a fresh transfer, it would be done three to five days, either three days or five days post egg retrieval, which is another thing that I think about all the time. Like, I don't know how I would have done a, a transfer after egg retrieval just because you feel like crap and so your body's going through a lot and then if you get pregnant from that transfer it's like your body has gone through so much and then it's like then you're pregnant and your body's going through a lot then too so that is one reason one benefit I guess um, of a frozen embryo transfer is you get that little break for your body to recover which is really nice um, so like I said I didn't do a fresh transfer because we did the PGS testing which I have videos on that as well. Um, I won't go too into detail about that, but they have to biopsy the embryos and send them off for testing before you um, can transfer them. So, and that takes about two to three weeks. So you, in the case of doing PGS testing, you would have to do a frozen embryo transfer. So that's what we did. But while you're recovering from egg retrieval, you will get um, reports about your your eggs, your embryos, you know, all that stuff. So right after the egg retrieval, like I said, we were told we had 22 eggs that were retrieved. Um, the following day, we were um, given a fertil fertilization report, meaning um, the amount of eggs that were fertilized with my husband's sperm, which I forgot to mention, he did give his sperm sample to the clinic the morning of our egg retrieval. Um, so like I said, the following day, they called us and let us know that of the 22 eggs that we retrieved, 16 were mature and I believe 12 fertilized. So from that, um, 
we were told we would just have to wait a couple days and they would give us a report on um, what the embryos, like what of those had turned into embryos and were growing. So I believe it was day three, like two days after that, they called us and let us know that we had 11 embryos that were developing. And then um, on day five, they told us we had six embryos, I think. I'm trying to remember all this. Um, and then, but they were going to give it one more day because they had a couple that they thought would make it to freeze. So sure enough, I remember they called me Saturday night. It was like late too. So I was like so stressed about it. Um, they called me Saturday night and let me know that we had eight embryos that were, um, good quality to freeze and be biopsied to send out for PGS testing. Um, so that was such a relief because we were thinking it'd be so awesome if we could get um, three to four great like PGS tested embryos. Um, so we thought eight was a great number because we knew some of those probably wouldn't be PGS um, normal. So um, we were just feeling really good about that number. But it is, I'm not going to lie, it is hard to see, you know, 22 eggs and then it to see it like go down to, you know, eight in the end. And then after that, we waited about three weeks. I think it was almost three weeks before we got the PGS test results, um, which told us we had three normal, chromosomally normal embryos. And um, they also told us the genders, which we have mentioned that here on the, this channel, all three of those are girls. And so up until that point, um, that is where we decided to take a couple months off because um, we were moving and some, you know, we were just busy with uh, work and life and all that stuff. So we took a couple months to uh, rejuvenate and um, get ready to do our frozen embryo transfer. So like I said, I will do another video that talks all about the frozen embryo transfer part of this IVF process. And um, it, that'll hopefully give you guys some insight, those of you who will be doing a frozen embryo transfer. So that is pretty much it. I hope I didn't miss anything. If you guys have any insight you can add to this, if you've been through IVF, put it down in the comments below so that we can better support this community and bring more awareness to the whole infertility and IVF conversation. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I will catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one. Bye.